Hey everybody, my name's Catherine. Welcome back to my channel. I make videos about dyeing, sewing, and upcycling. If that sounds like something you're into, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell. So today I'm gonna to be going over some ice dyeing techniques and I'm gonna show you how I made this really pretty striped ice dyed t-shirt. I've put the links to all of the supplies I've used in my description down below. So first I used a pre-washed 100% cotton t-shirt, soda ash, fiber reactive dyes from Dharma, I used Raven and Ecru, ice, aluminum foil, plastic knives, I have a screen that I like to use and a plastic container. This plastic container actually was a little too small so I ended up using a bigger one but I'll put the size of the one I liked in the description down below. And then also I use a mask when I'm working with powdered Procyon dye to just protect myself and gloves, a drop cloth, and not pictured are some rubber bands. So next I'm going to start to fold up my t-shirt and I wanna do a stripe pattern. So I'm gonna start by folding it in the center front, and then I'm going to accordion fold it into a rectangle, and I'm just gonna fold my sleeves into that rectangle, and I'll do the same thing on the other side. And then I'm gonna come in with rubber bands and tie it up. So each rubber band is going to be a stripe or it'll kind of give me a little bit of a barrier for where I can put the die once I get it all set up. So it's um, kind of like a visual marker for me to know where my stripes are gonna go. And once I get them on there, I can kind of adjust them to be however I want them to be. They can be as close together or as far apart as I want them to be. And I think that looks good. So I'm gonna kind of open up the pleats so that I can get the dye into those folds. And I'm going to next make a sort of trough out of a foil piece. I'm gonna double it up just to make it sort of strong. It just needs to be about the same length as whatever it is that you're dyeing. And I'm gonna cut some holes into it so that the dye can pass through the holes. I just wanna make sure that the t-shirt's not sitting in the dye runoff for this pattern. Sometimes when I do ice dyeing, I do want it to sit in the runoff. So it fits just perfectly and I've made sure to put the t-shirt in and make sure it's not twisted and I've kept those pleats open. So I'm gonna come in with some dye now and I'm using Raven from Dharma Training and Ecru. They're both colors that split, so I really like using colors that split. If you're interested in learning more about ice dyeing, you can check out my website for my online ice dyeing classes. I have both live classes and non-live classes that you can take at any time. So you can go and check it out at onyxartstudios.com and be sure to sign up for my mailing list so you never miss a new date. So I'm just putting this Ecru on and I'm putting it onto the t-shirt dry. I'm being pretty generous with this one because this is a very light color. Next I'm coming in with the Raven and I'm being a little more careful to not get too much dye on there because this Raven is pretty powerful stuff. I'm just sort of sprinkling it, making sure it gets into the folds. And I am trying not to get it onto the parts that are gonna be the Ecru stripes. I really like to just use these knives because they're just so much easier to get little bits of dye and be more precise with how I put them on the fabric. So I'll put a little more Ecru just for good measure. 
and then I'm gonna put some dry soda ash on top. The soda ash fixes the dye to the cotton and it helps to just make sure that the cotton is opened up so that the dye can really get into the fibers. So now I'm gonna set up my ice dyeing so that it can start to melt. And I, like I said, this tray is too small. You can see it's kind of hanging off the edges. So I ended up getting a bigger container. This is an 18 gallon Rubbermaid that um, I use for ice dyeing all the time. And it's going to fit the entire screen and the entire t-shirt on top of it. I didn't want to have it melting all over my studio space, so it's better to have a bigger one. And as you can see, I've put a drop cloth underneath this just in case it leaks. Um, you know, ice dyeing can be really messy, so I just want to make sure I don't get the dye everywhere. So I'm putting the screen on top of the Rubbermaid and I'm putting my dyed piece in the little trough on top of the screen so that way the melt off from the ice and the dye is going to go through that screen. And now I'm going to place my ice on it and I'm just carefully putting it on because I don't want it to bump the dye and the soda ash and um, knock it off of the shirt. I'm just going to fill up this trough with the ice as much as I can. I don't really need too much for this piece. And this is just one technique of ice dyeing. You know, there are many ways of doing ice dyeing. I have a lot of YouTube videos about ice dyeing. I'll put the playlist link down below in the description and link them at the end of this video. So you can check out other ideas if you're looking for more ice dyeing inspiration. So this piece, I was worried that the foil was going to bend, so I went and I got some rubber bands to just loosely kind of hold the sides of the foil together. And I'm just going to kind of put them on very carefully not to disturb the ice or the dye and, um, and that's just going to keep it kind of all compact. And here it is, all ready to go, and it's starting to melt. And I'm just going to let it sit overnight. Here it is a few hours later. You can see how that melting ice is kind of mixing with the dye and the soda ash, and it's falling into the bottom of the container. And you can kind of see how the fabric looks. It's really pretty. And I'm just gonna let it sit overnight. Hey everyone, it's time to open up my ice dye here. It's been sitting overnight and I'm really excited to see how it turned out. So I'm just opening this up very carefully and I'm doing it on my drop cloth. Just to make sure I don't make a big mess in my studio. You can see there's dye everywhere. And and just carefully take the rubber bands off without snipping the t-shirt. It's very sophisticated for a little kid shirt. I love it. It turned out way cooler than I thought it was gonna be. So, next what I'll do is rinse this with cold and then wash it with hot and synthropol and throw it straight into the dryer to set the dye. So I rinsed it out until the water ran clear and I rinsed it with cold. And here I'm adding a little bit of Synthrapol and I'm washing it in hot. So the Synthrapol is gonna keep the dye from running into the dyed parts and onto the white parts. Here it is after it's been dried and you can see the color has faded a little bit and you can really see those beautiful color splits and color variations. If you've done ice dyeing, be sure to let me know down in the comments what color combinations you like ice dyeing with. Thank you guys so much for watching and be sure to go and follow me on social media at Onyx Art Studios for more inspiration and check out my website for my online workshops and sign up for my email list. I hope you enjoyed this video. Here are some more ice dyeing videos and my ice dyeing playlist so you can get more ice dyeing inspiration. 
Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time.